Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker. Today I got a special, special guest. I've seen her everywhere, mingling and rubbing shoulders with everyone from Peter Guns to the boxer Shannon yes. Briggs to your guy Charles yes. White. Everywhere from coast to coast. You can see yes, her uh, everywhere, everywhere you, you, you go, you can see this woman. <laughs> And this is the beautiful, the intelligent KK. How you doing, KK? I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you for that intro. <laughs> yes, no, no doubt. Well deserved. Well deserved. Now, yeah. uh, it's an honor, as I've told you before, to have you on, on the platform. And uh, yes, sir. I'm privileged for you to uh, rejoin me again. So, oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, right. So, I like to be transparent with the people and, and I think it's a lesson in everything. So I'll tell the people how we came about this second meeting and they missed the first meeting. Okay. So I came across KK uh, as I was viewing uh, some posts from Charleston White months ago. And uh, she popped up in a couple of posts and I said, well, man, well, who is this woman? Because she had an energy, a radiant energy. And uh I'm just like, it just sparked my interest. Like, who is this woman? So went to her page and we had a bunch of mutual friends, including my brother said. So I was like, man, who, well, maybe I need to know this woman. So I dug deeper and I saw all the, the, uh, the work she does in the community, uh, particularly yes. with the Dallas County Juvenile Department. And, uh, yes. and, uh, I just saw how you, you, uh, you give in different ways. You guys give food, you do mentoring, uh, counseling. And uh, you're just a bridge uh, for these these kids and a conduit for these kids to get things done. Yes, and I sir. appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, KK, what what got you in the uh, I want to say the business, but what got you? Well, in? Go ahead. No, just a little, uh, like you said, a little background on myself. Uh, of course, I was born and raised in Oak Cliff, uh, Southern Sector. <laughs> Okay. Uh, went to, I graduated from Roosevelt High School, Franklin Delano Roosevelt High School, 93, class of 93. Uh, then I shortly after that, I started working for this, uh, it was like an aftercare or a drug treatment facility in South Dallas. It was called Home Street Foundation, which is off of Home Street right there in South Dallas. And that blew my mind because I was like, man, it's kids on drugs. You know, it was just something I was unaware of, but it's a whole nother world. And at that time, it was banging, like banging because it was like money, like out of North Star and Medicare. So they were paying like billions of dollars to get these kids help in the community where they were. But it'd be like a crack house right across the street. Mm -hmm. So I started working there back in like 96, I think. And I worked there for years and I was good at it. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I, you know, in 19, 20 years old, you coming into yourself. I had a baby. I didn't know that I was good at something, you know, but I started working with kids. So I was like, I'm from kind of where they're from, but I've never done drugs actually, but I had been around them. I was, I was exposed to, to drugs. My mom, you know, my family did a little weed or whatever. I had, I had seen some crack addicts, but never, you know, experienced it, experienced it. But what I would do was I put a little flare on the kids. I was a cook. So I had at that time kids that were from TYC, they were like 18 and I was like 20 and I would go in and cook for them. And we had a lot of problems with the younger girls because they would come and cook and they would end up having relations with them because they were around the same age. But I was about business. I would go in there and so they would have like regular toast and cereal, but I would throw the sugar, cinnamon sugar like from the house. I throw the mm -hmm. cinnamon sugar on it. And, you know, I would uh, add a little something to the cereal and maybe put them an extra little piece of meat on there. So they got comfortable with me and they started respecting me out of that. But I didn't I didn't cross any boundaries with them because I know those kids were convicts. They were coming out for criminal offenses. And uh, the counselors that worked there, they saw that in me and they advanced me to a to a worker uh, instead of a cook. And so after that, I, I, I began uh, getting kids enrolled in school, counseling with them. We would go get them jobs. Um, instead of like eating lunch at the facility, I would just grab all of the food and take them out to the parks. And uh, we would just to give them a different experience about the hood. You know, like you don't, 
you don't just have to sit here. It's, it, you can go out to the park and, you know, you can, uh, it's other things you can do. And uh, I started doing that. And so it came up to 2000. I started working for the juvenile department. And and that's, the rest is kind of like, a, you know, it's a set in stone. At first, I worked with all girls for about 11 years. And then I transitioned over to working with all boys on, up until today. So that's that's my backstory on, on that part. Wow. Wow. Impressive. Uh, I, I'm telling you, you showed a lot of maturity and discipline to be so young getting into this and, right. and being around kids close to your age, but not cl- crossing that, that fence, you know? So, uh, right. wow. Right. That, that's a lot of discipline and maturity. Now, mm-hmm. do you notice a difference or do the females and the males the boys and the girls face different issues or is it pretty much they're facing the same issues or dealing with the same trauma when they come into these facilities? Uh, it's, it's different because of the physicality of it, but it's basically the same. It's like a, a, a breakdown in the family structure and, and just, um, yeah, just a, a breakdown in the family structure is like the main thing. And, and then the, the disciplinary part of it, like, uh, uh, following just basic rules and and as far as like the male and the female is both the, both is kind of in the same because all the majority of them are being raised by single mothers right. so from a male perspective if you're raised by a single mother you pretty much like a daughter mm. but but we were taught or kind of you know the women kind of are harder on the girls than we are on the boys so that maybe i can't really come from the male perspective but I have two sons and then I have a daughter. And I was much harder on my daughter than I was my sons. Because after I read, I read a few books, the William Lynch story and you know, some more things. I I read, I looked into it and I was like, wow, man, I'm I'm just I'm following the same, <laughs> the same lineage. I need to change some things, you know, right. in, in my, yeah, in my in my own home. So right. Well, I think yeah. you bring up something very, uh, very important that I don't think a lot of people even recognize. But I think that's what's uh, well, that's one of the reasons why the family unit is needed so much to give that balance. Uh, right. Because it's it's natural for you to be harder on, you know, another female <laughs> because right. you're, you're female. Right. And exactly. it's, it's natural for you to, uh, I guess, uh, somewhat cater to the male. You right. know, because that's natural. And if a father was involved, he would be harder on the boys and lighter on the girl. I mean, right. yeah, that's that's natural. That's a natural structure. And so, yeah, when you have that breakdown, someone's going to suffer always. Uh, right. Yeah, right. I know that. I know that firsthand. So, yeah, especially I, especially especially if one piece is missing. Yes. Now, if you have both both parties there. They have a better opportunity, but not to not to put down a single mother, not to do right. that at all. I'm not, not at all. women. If single mamas, y'all go for what y'all doing, but it's just like they say, it is what it is. That, that's right. that it, it ends up happening most of the time. So right, right, yeah. When when I want to put down single mothers, I think most people, uh, maybe I'm naive, but I, I believe most people do the best they know. Uh, right, and so right, correct. Uh, they 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 deal with the hand they're given and make the most out of it. Uh, I think that's right. how most people move. Now, right. you you got into this, uh, I guess over twenty years now, right? Uh, twenty five yeah. years. Yeah. Right. Yeah, twenty five. Twenty five years. years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yes, sir. Um, so, have you noticed progression? Has it gotten better or gotten worse over these twenty five years? I would I would say for sure the. The, the respect level has gotten far worse over the 25 years. It has gotten far worse. Uh, I see more occurrences where the parents are trying to accommodate the kids, like being their friends, instead of of giving them uh, so, uh, something to look forward to. They want to make sure that they're okay. Like they make sure that they're good. When our parents were here, they wanted to make sure that you had what you need and they didn't give them if you were good or not. <laughs> but right. you know, and they didn't care about being your friend. If right. you know it and this is that and but now is is the the respect level has gone like out the window from what from my point of view right now. Right, right. Now 
I noticed when I was young, young uh, ironically, I came out of high school, uh, 95, but I noticed okay. when I was growing up, most, uh, most young men, I, I would say most, 75% of people had the two parent home. Uh, okay. I didn't. And, uh, one of my close buddies didn't, but his father was involved. And then you had a lot of stepfathers, of course. But, uh, mm -hmm. I think maybe 10 years before, before me, that started becoming very prevalent where the home was breaking up. Uh, right. How can we bring that back together? Because what I'm seeing is it's a lot of bitterness, a lot of finger pointing between the man and the woman, particularly the black man and the black woman. Uh, I can't speak mm -hmm. on really any other races. You know, I'm a black man <laughs> and a black, I grew right. up in a black community. Uh, right. At the end of the day, yes, the man and the woman suffer, but the kids suffer the most, and then they eventually have kids, and then we we create a cycle. Like, what do you think is going to take for us to come together? Well, you know, back in the day, of course, from our foundations, even if you had a single parent, you were taught the structure. If uh, If mom was hooking up with somebody, it was pretty much like you didn't really know she was hooking up. But now today is prevalent on hooking up. So that's we're we're getting uh, um, the result of people just hooking up. Oh, she fine, man. She thick. You know, she this. I'm finna hit. And then I hit. And then there go the baby. The baby is produced off a of hit. It ain't mm -hmm. produced off of I loved her or I cared about her or we had a bond or. You know, so so the lady is she's angry. She's she didn't she didn't she she wanted to be hit, but she didn't she didn't realize that she was gonna have a baby out of, out of the hit because she'd been hit before and she didn't have a baby, but right. she didn't realize oh boy, and then oh what does old boy do? You know, after he hit, he don't he doesn't have any kind of family structure. No, he doesn't work. Uh, he he looked good that night at the club or wherever they went. He he, he was starched down. You know, he had a little. In ones spreading his money, you know, it, and that's what everything is based off. Of. It's like, like um, I think Charleston has mentioned this before: the shiny things, everything. That's what gets people's attention now. You know, the bag. He got the old girl. He got a bag. Or he gonna buy us a drink, and you know, to get it to get back together, it has to be. It'll have to be a forum, a huge forum of just a uh, family structure you know we got to just grab some people and start teaching back family structure again you know to to reiterate it back into the community into the home because even like you said my mom was a single mom because my dad passed away but it was a lot of respect there in that she didn't bring a lot of guys around me I never saw that she didn't um she she never remarried she um that, and that was by choice, I'm assuming. Uh, she just kept it real respectful. And I don't know if it was for me, if she was scared, you know, if she just wanted to get married one time. I'm not sure. But it was a lot that went into that. And me seeing that when I when I um, got involved in relationships, I wanted to be married. I wanted to do that because I, it was something that a family dynamic. I saw my grandmother and grandfather married. I saw my aunts and uncles married. You know, it was just like a, a hereditary thing, you know. So I'm not sure what we can do, but to start it out, just to give out that information, resources is what I can say. Um, not to just be on myself, your book. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, uh, just to give out that kind of information. Like you said, it's for the men, but the women are welcome. But this is just for my brothers right here. I need y'all to get this. You know, and I need y'all to read it to your boys if you have them. And uh, I was just, you know, kind of thinking, what was your inspiration? I ain't, I'm not trying to take over your interview. No, no, what no. Was your inspiration? <laughs> no, 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 no. We see this. This is a conversation. I'm not even interviewing you. Okay. That's why I call it conversations. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. We we're just chopping it up, okay. and we letting people okay. eavesdrop. So my inspiration. Wow. So uh, okay. give me a few minutes here. So my inspiration. Uh, I'm gonna go back. No, go ahead. I've always had the uh, I've always had the gift of writing, and uh, this is a lesson okay. for for uh, for people. Uh, but I always had the gift of writing, 
But I put myself in a situation at an early age where I couldn't focus on my God-given talent. I had to get into the job force and make money, right. get married young, have kids young. And right. so that's a lesson for people. You, you limit your choices and you do things you don't want to do sometimes when you do things out right. of order. And so, right. uh, yeah, and that, that'll wind up getting me a, a criminal record. Uh, fortunately, yeah. you know, I don't have a felony, but uh, just doing things out of desperation, right? So you're putting a right. gift to the side and just, just doing day by day. So fast forward, about seven or eight years ago, uh, I was going through a custody battle, speaking of family, going through a okay. custody battle, and it got ugly. Uh, I ended up getting joint. And then uh, after that, man, it still was ugly. She accused me of uh, physically abusing my son. Uh, I addressed okay. him on an issue at school. I kind of jacked him up, but she said I choked him, uh, okay. which I didn't. And uh, that became a big mess. So now I'm in criminal court. <laughs> so okay. just got out of family court and criminal court. And uh, my money's low. I lost my job behind right. it. And I said, man, I need a, a release uh, before I snap. Uh Mm -hmm. And uh, the writing was the release. And I said, okay. uh, I'm not the only brothers going through this. I'm going to tell parts of my story. But I don't want to shame or embarrass my kids. And I also right. don't want to write it in the way where I'm finger pointing. Uh, I have to look within and say, and right. see, man, everything I experienced were from my own choices. Right. Whoever I ended up with, whoever I had children with, whatever, those were my choices. You know, I wasn't I wasn't raped. I wasn't uh, a gun wasn't put to my head to make these choices. Right. right. <laughs> these were my choices. So I had to be accountable and uh, I had to share different stories uh, through history about just situations men being in, just not my situation, but just different situations, how we uh, can hit rock bottom, but overcome. And, uh, and redeem ourselves and we got to take responsibility be accountable take responsibility and then share those stories don't hide those short those right. stories you know don't don't live in shame because uh those stories are to help others once you overcome people. they'll help right. other people so right. you know don't yeah don't live in shame don't hide those stories uh you know let the let the people know the right people know and so uh you know they can be helped so yeah that's that's what inspired the book yeah okay okay so that's yeah i didn't up. i didn't even know you you were reading the book <laughs> yeah, okay yeah i try to do when i talk to people at least try to have a little bit of background <laughs> you know i don't want <laughs> yeah. I, I want to have a little background on you you know what you were about or whatever because i i definitely don't want to support the the wrong thing you know and i'm talking and then somebody you know i know because i do have a, a big platform besides this my job is on the line right from what i say and do you know so i have people listening to me as well and of course when we finish whatever you send out i'll have all my people to watch as well but uh or to listen in as well and uh, i want to make sure i'm saying the right thing and then one of my cousins or something come up and like hey that dude used to you know and i'm right. like okay wait a minute no <laughs> no no so no. yeah I, yeah, yeah i I, I, re know. I respect that and that's the right. way you got to do it to protect yourself. Right. But uh, right. yeah, I guarantee nothing's gonna come back on me. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm, I got I'm you. good. I got yeah, you. I'm good. I got you. But uh, yeah. Matter, yeah as a matter of fact, speaking of family, I think your your cousin inboxed me like, "Do you know my cousin?" And that's how I kind of you know like, well, I don't really know him, but I can you know I can I can try to catch up with him. But you caught up with me first before I could catch up with you. So yeah. It, 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 it turned out all good. It turned oh, yeah, out it, all it, it worked good. out. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, uh, yeah unfortunately. Well. Yeah. Um, so the, the family structure now, we we 25 years in. What mm -hmm. where do you see this going? What do you want? What's the end goal? Well, that's a good one. That, that's a good one. My what I see is, you know, I, I really wanted to have a safe place for these kids once they're released uh just like right now we're having a, an abundance of 17 year olds uh unfortunately 
some of them are making phone calls and their mom like, you can't come back here. You know, you can't mm. come back to my, you can't come back here. What, imagine yourself, 17 year old Stacy, and you call your mom, like, come pick me up. I'm getting released. You know, you excited. And then she like, no, you can't come back to my, what do you do? Wow. Couple the fact that when they came in, something you want to do when you grow up because you know we always had that question younger in uh, kindergarten first grade what do you want to do when you grow up i want to be a doctor want to be of course they want to be a rapper and you and i tell them that's not anything to me because anybody can rap i can rap you can rap you know uh give us a good beat and we can go you know put it in the pan get to the man play in the sand you know anybody can do that but what do you what do you like to do five things that you like to do and do you know that most of these children say nothing? They don't, they don't, I don't know, miss. How do you not know at 16 and 17? I would even say 15 at this point if you're committing right. crimes because you don't have that much time. You don't have the same amount of time as a kid in the correct grade in, in school doing what they're supposed to do and you're already committing crimes. You don't have as much time as that, as that kid. Right. Because you already uh, shorten your days because you put yourself in a situation to get harmed. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Robbing somebody, you're taking a risk at that. It, it might be successful one time because you're telling me about it, but obviously, first of all, you're not good at it because you're in here. You got caught, right. and then you you might need to find something else to do because that, you're not you. That's not that's not your calling. You you're not good at that. So. But that's what they know how to do. So they saying, you know, I don't know, Miss, I hadn't thought about it. How do you not think about it? So for uh, to get back to the question, for as a goal, my goal would I would like to see is like a house uh, where the workers will be there. They can live there about six or seven, 17 year olds to go there, find them jobs, get them back in school where they can have the resources available. Uh, as soon as they turn 18 so that they don't have to be dependent on mom or whatever the family is that's turning them away. Right. Um, and I know six or seven is not a lot, but six or seven being helped. Um, yeah, six or seven being helped. <laughs> yeah, six or seven being helped. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's what my goal is. That's what I want to, that's what I would like to see. But they have, I know they won't, they're going to have to be monitored as well because they're going to need that structure. But you know, just like you said, to put that back into them, uh, getting them to to get the family orientation, you know, as well as uh, mentoring, training while they're there, and then going out finding jobs and understanding the dynamics instead of just getting up like you like as far as prison with a structure, get up with a lifestyle structure like that. Get up, eat breakfast. Uh, you know, you're gonna have to do some kind of schooling or or trade or something that day, like you're going to work, come home, have a meal, have recreation, uh, work out or whatever, and then go go back to sleep and then be a productive citizen. That's what I would like to see, something like wow, something that, like that. That's beautiful. Uh, as a community, how can we help make that happen? Where, where do you really need, I, you know, you never can have enough money helping out. Uh, right. So right. how can we donate money? Uh, how can entrepreneurs extend opportunities for people to come in for maybe summer jobs? Mm -hmm. as, as a community, and this is, this is how I got started uh, with the guys that you see, the public figures, is because one, one Black History Month, uh, I, I was going to work every day just going to work, going to work. And we have predominantly brown and black children at our facility. And I just noticed the whole entire 29 days of that February, not one black history program, not one uh, black visitor came or said anything, asked um, the superintendent at that time if she would mind if I would start inviting people in. And on that Friday, if I could have like a little program for the kids. I, that's what I love to do. I love to put together programs, parties. I love to do that sort of thing. So I started doing that. And then um, another one of my teachers, Miss County Collins, she, is, she would assist me in, in doing these type of things. So one year we got together and man, it was, it was mind blowing. We had like 
up, some ladies that did spoken word. We had Fred Hammond. We had Trap Boy Freddy. We had Say Cheese TV. We had uh, some guys from, uh, they were, I don't know, I don't want to say the fraternity wrong. Yeah. A, a, no, the Alpha. Alpha, if you know the fraternity, I'm not sure. Yeah, I know uh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, the Alpha. Yeah, just a little bit. Alpha I, they came yeah. in. Yeah, and, and I just wanted, I tell them I wanted to see people, I want these kids to see people that look like them. So I got the guy from the manager at the grocery store in Oak Cliff. I got him to come in and talk to him. I got some of the guys that recruit from the uh, military, uh, the army, I think it was. We got some of those guys and we had for that whole month, we had people in and out of that place that looked like them, wasn't basketball players, wasn't football players. They, were, they weren't, they um, were you know, all these high profile faces and all that. And, wow. and uh, they were just, they were just kind of amazed because it was like, dang, if somebody looked like us came to see us, they came to talk to us. So then it, be, it then it started becoming, Miss King, who you gonna get next time? Who you gonna get, you know, you gonna bring somebody, who you gonna get? And then I was like, well, let me see if I can find somebody, you know? So then I started reaching out to, you know, what, hey, do y'all mind, you know, I mind, being turned down you say no I you know then I just catch you another day I'll wait till I see you drinking or something and ask you or <laughs> right. you know I'll wait for you in front of in front of the commissioner you know I'm I'm gonna I'm watch you I'm gonna see how you move if I so I can catch you at the right time for right. on the way you can do it say yes you know so I caught a few people like that and then uh Fred Hammond he ended up uh challenging because I think that year was like a, a lot of challenges to others so he challenged a bunch of uh, guys, TD Jakes and all that, they they didn't really show up, but you know, just to just to see if they would come. Mm -hmm. uh, and so after that, they kind of gave me, you know, they gave me, I, I became supervisor shortly after that. And then after that, it was a go because I could do it kind of on my own with their permission. And I would run all the people through the facility. You know, we have to get them approved. But uh right now I have like a project pad he's waiting, but because of the COVID, you know, um I can't really, he can't come inside, but we're waiting to do like a virtual type of thing with the kids. Uh, uh, Pro Project Pat, um, Three Six Mafia, and I'm like, kind of like, hey, wow. you know, fan base, like, uh, Bok Bok Chicken Head Project Pat, want to <laughs> yes. talk to kids? Like now, you know. That's huge. So that, that's, a, yeah, it's huge for me, you know, like, I'm just still in my head, I'm like a little girl from Oak Cliff, I'm just, I did. I never inspired to meet anybody. I'm not a, 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 um, a. I don't know what you call them. I'm not a groupie or anything like that. But I really, really like to see they these kids' faces when they see somebody from TV come to talk to them. It's it's amazing. Even like in the neighborhood, like oh miss, I know that guy. He worked at that store. Okay, so next time, don't rob the store. Go in there and ask him, can you have a job? See, make your make your community familiar with these kids because they're afraid of them. They're afraid to talk to them. They're afraid right. to tell them to they close up. And who, how else are they going to know if a grown adult does They want structure. That's one thing we know about these kids. They want you to tell they want you to tell them what to do and they want to know that you're not going to back down when they tell them what to do. That's that's what yeah. they love about me. I don't yeah. give a damn. I'm going to tell you what's right. And I'm gonna tell you what to do. I don't care. You I means when we get in the free, I'm gonna kill you with the same same gun you bought, son. That that's a billion dollar industry. They sell them. So right. just know this place is for you. When you making right. them threats, don't do that because I'm out here before you. So don't right. start making no threats to Miss King, honey. You are, you know where I say, where am I from? Oh, clear. Okay, you already know. So don't yeah. don't get stuck with all that. You threatening me and all that. We ain't gonna go there. I need you to do what I ask you to do, and then we're gonna have a good day. And the, and they they go right on about their business, and they end up just, I'm my bad, miss. You know, I'm sorry. Whatever, whatever. But yeah, that that's uh, yeah. On that on that part, that's how that even got started, and it and it just blew up. It just took off. So yeah. as far as community helping, if they could, like I said, do more things in the community, have like a community um. Uh, a youth explosion where you were just hiring youth because I know you're not going to be able to hire every one of them. You're not. Right. But they they want to know that it's something I because I'm telling you, whatever they're doing, the money is coming quick and they don't mind doing it. They don't mind if they have to kill you 
for five hundred dollars or whatever, they don't they don't mind doing it right now. And I don't I, yeah. I hate to hear that. And they don't mind doing it to each other. Right. And, it's, and, it's, and, the, and the statistics, yeah, the statistics of back up what I'm saying. So I don't I don't that's why I, I just tell the truth that I know and then you know I let I let the rest speak for itself. So yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's just that's the truth. That's all facts. Uh I mm -hmm. think and you, you mentioned something really profound about uh they want they want order, they want to be corrected. Sure. But I think uh especially a lot of men my age and older, they need to understand that um this this child, this male child is not the same male child as when we were growing up, right? right. So you can still address the child, but you gotta understand this child is uh is used to hearing the voice of a woman most times. And they'll listen exactly. to a woman before they listen to a man. But they exactly. they really want to listen to a man, but there's a disconnect, right? So right, so, right. so so brothers, you gotta you gotta pull that, you know, you gotta have the gift of gab and know how to come to people and, and pull that kid to the side. Uh if you try right. to address the kid in front of his peers, it ain't gonna be good, <laughs> right? So it yeah, it ain't gonna be good. So we gotta know how to uh address these children uh because this is a different child than when i grew up in the 80s uh 70s and 80s Correct. right so Correct. yeah we just, we just got to adapt now it's it's funny you say you're not a groupie because you know when i used to uh when i was researching you and i see you with these mm -hmm. celebrities uh -huh. and that's one reason i wanted to speak to you also because i said you know she's with these celebrities but she's not the super fan, she's not coming off as a super fan in these picks. I said her energy is matching their energy. And I was like, wow, right. that's that's impressive. Uh yeah, but that that hey, that mirrors what what you've been since 96 working with these youth, mature right, and right. disciplined. Yeah. So that lines right, right. back up. It now bit, your humbleness, very yes. humble. I'm a humble person. Yeah. yeah. I just appreciate them for taking their time out because they didn't have to. But also at the same time, they want to chime into what I'm doing. And I respect that far to the moon. But when they come to me, like I'm the star, you know, it's like you want to do what you're doing yeah. because they were young. They were kids before. And that's that like amazes me. Like, wow, I didn't know I was doing anything. But to be like the mama of her kids, it's just like you it's just like you work, you know, like you work for GM and you fixing cars, fixing cars realize how many cars you have fixed you know throughout years you just you just you were just fixing cars you know and that's what, that's with me i i really don't know the worth of my job until i have like a 35 year old girl come and say miss i remember y'all used to beat our ass because before we had cameras to be honest we used to go in on them you know right. and it wasn't to her it was for out of love because you thought you could whip a woman Right. And we've always been told from my mama, when you step in a woman's shoes, we're going to show you what a woman, do, you know, exactly. and, and now she, she's like, miss, I'm 35 and I have a house and what y'all taught me, you know, I got two kids, I got married, you know, and that kind of stuff. And that, and then I learned that, wow, I am what I'm trying to teach. Yeah. I have, I have, is now I can't take, I can't take this lightly no more. I can't be, you know, in there bullshit and I can't be in there playing around like, this ain't serious. This shit's serious. Like I'm really impacting people's lives for real. And so yeah. quite often, you know, and I, I can't really bring up the kids, but when they see me and they say something, I can say, yeah, baby, I remember you. I remember you, you know, and I, I get it often, you know, like, hey, miss, I remember you. And the boys are a little bit different because I don't know if I did something to offend them or, you know, but they, they'll run up like, yeah, miss, I remember you. I'm like, yeah, nigga, but I remember you too. But they're like, no, you did. I'm just saying you look good out here. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, okay, come like that then. Cause you right. know, Miss Kenny still look so <laughs> right. off. But, you know, it, it's all in, it's all out of love. You know, some of them I can even see on the streets, you know, I can see them doing something wrong with their parent mm. and they'll stop. And then some of them, if they have, you know, kind of backtracked and got on drugs. I know one kid I had, he was at the 7-Eleven, how they sit out on, out on the streets early one morning. And uh, I had some uh, extra little change. So I, I uh, bought them like about seven, eight sausage biscuits. And I, you know, I was just like, here y'all, make, make sure I gave them the bag. I said, make sure all your homeboys get something to eat or whatever, make, just to make sure they fed, you know. But 
I mean, it, this stuff you gotta do. Yeah. This stuff you gotta do, man. Have to. Uh, just like the the uh, recently with Charleston White, uh, you know they they pro they brought the program over to the facility, and like I said, they they came with an abundance of guys, Shannon Briggs, and uh, uh, it was some more. Uh, is I think his name is Glasgow. He used to be with Cash Money Records, and then they had Mama D. Mm. Uh, they had, Frankie's uh, mom. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. they had a they had a plethora of people, um, but it was a lot for the kids. But they did say that when they got released, you know, they would assist. Uh, they had the CEO, um, Mr. E from uh, Boss Talk One Hundred and One, and his wife Stephanie. Mm. Uh, they they really held up to what they you know what they uh, said they were going to do, and a few of the kids they they really have they've been calling. And uh, they were like, Miss, you know, I don't, I don't have no clothes. You know, I don't have, my mama can't afford the clothes because you have to remember when the kid, when they go in there, the, the mama's still trying to make it for, you know, she's trying to get it in. Like she got two babies at home and right. he's probably the oldest and got time, you know, to be buying stuff and he can go back to jail and right. all that stuff. So, you know, they, they, they uh, give them like a couple of, like a, maybe a week worth of clothes but it's fashion stuff, so they don't have to get back out and hustle and rob. They'll already be dressed, you know, and that's that's another one of my upcoming projects I have. I want to open a, a clothing closet at the facility mm. uh, so they can have, you know, when they get out a week's worth of underwear, socks, yeah. uh, sh- shirts, pants, and some, ni- you know, some nice shoes, quality stuff, you some stuff that you want to go back out in the free because yeah. it's all about competition you know they they're competing they're competing with something that they really can't afford of right. course but they want to look like everybody else so I, I can't make this kind of money my mama don't have it i'm gonna go rob somebody i'm gonna go right. steal it or i'm gonna go take their stuff you know and that's that's what the, the what that's what the hype is all about you know right. and like i tell them you have to steal it baby you still fronting yeah, yeah. <laughs> from yes. in front or flogging or whatever y'all call it, I say you're not what you is because you really can't afford it. It's I don't I don't get what y'all dynamic is, but reality reality is if you had to steal it, you can't afford it. So you still not what you trying to portray you are. But right. uh, that's that's my upcoming projects. I just talked to one uh my assistant my I'm sorry my superintendent yesterday about that um as they put another duty on me <laughs> at work uh, in the inventory department of the clothing, uh, he told me that it'll just go right into my uh, my clothing closet that they build in, out in the new, new building that we have right now. So wow. uh, that's, that's what I want to do, yeah. So as far as goals and me, that those are the two things that I would like to see before I uh, go ahead and call it quits. Wow. Wow. You really out here putting in work. That's, uh, wow. We appreciate you. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, I wanted to give you flowers. You know, I wanted to, cause yeah, I know, I know probably six months from now, it's going to be hard to get in contact with you. So I said, let me, let me get, (laughs) yeah, let me get her right now. She's going to be cross country and probably international. Hey, if that phone ring, I'm answering. That's one thing about me. No person is too little. No person is too big. I'll never big out little you a person because I remember where I was and I remember, you know, I used to tell them that as a supervisor, I would tell my staff, I always, there's two, a couple of things I do. I have a letter where I got denied the first time for a supervisor and I keep that letter all the time. And sometimes I'll go back and read it. And I, I, I tell myself often what God has for you is yours. Right. It doesn't matter who that, I mean, uh, unfortunately, half of the, uh, administration that kept denying me they got they they got shipped off somewhere and some of them a couple of them got fired uh but I still stand you know um and then I, I often tell them I prayed about um I prayed about uh if God ever elevated me if he ever put me in a position that I would always take care of the people in my in position that I was in because I remember I remember I would never get big headed I remember what I went through and I said, man, if I was if I was the supervisor, I would do this, you know. So so I um, I prayed about that uh, constantly. Let me always remain that that worker, wow. so that I can understand where the people come from. Because this thing all about the people. When you lose the people, man, 
it's because that's what that's what it's gonna take for yes. to work. You know, you lose your people. That's you got. So you got to put into them as well. Yes. So no doubt. Yeah, that's what it's all about. The people got to love the people. Uh, yep. To love the people is to love yourself. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I am you. You are me. But uh, that's it. I appreciate the time, KK. How can the people follow you? Okay, let me because you know I forget this part every time. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I then I almost go first. Yeah, I know, right? Let me see. Okay, so okay, I got it. You got it. So it's it's uh. Yeah, it's uh, KX is 4875 on Instagram, Keisha Young King on Facebook. Okay, now we're going to close with this. Our last segment, I always do this, this segment called 10 Speed. I named 10, oh, I named, yeah, I recite 10 words, <laughs> and you just say the first thing to come to your head. You ready? Okay. All right. Yeah. Cigars. Good hobby. Hats. Good fashion. Youth. Got of them. Family. Number one under God. Charleston White. My brother. It's my brother. <laughs> yes. Healing. Oh, very important. Forgiveness. More important than healing. Texas. My state. <laughs> the future. It's coming. All right. And last but not least, KK. Oh, I love her. She's the best. She's the bomb diggity. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll end yeah. it with that. Perfect. I All appreciate right. you again. I love you. And I will okay. support you. Okay. Love you more. Talk to you later. All right. Take care.